What if I told you one man from Glasgow had a hand in building Anfield, Highbury, Ayrson Park, Bramall Lane, Cardiff Arms Park, Craven Cottage, Dallymount Park, Deepdale, The Old Den, Dens Park, The Dell, Ewood Park, Fratton Park, Goodison Park, Hampden Park, Home Park, Ibrox, Hillsborough, Molyneux, Old Trafford, Park Avenue, Pitodry Stadium, Roker Park, Rugby Park, Somerset Park, Stamford Bridge, Starks Park, Twickenham, Tynecastle Park, Valley Parade, Villa Park, White Hart Lane and Windsor Park. You probably wouldn't believe me but this is the incredible story of Scottish stadium architect and football pioneer Archibald Leach. During the 1920s, 16 of the 22 top tier English clubs had part of their or all of their stadium built by this man. But how did he become such a force in the world of stadium design when teams were starting to grow and the sport itself was starting to grow and these clubs needed somewhere to call home? Well, this is the story of Archibald Leach. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, but we're going to start this story way back before he got into building stadiums. To give you a bit of context about his life, he was born in 18. 1865. This was around the era that slavery was being abolished in the United States and around the world as well. But the world had uh, still had a long way to go to abolish things like racism, hatred and segregation which were all massive parts of society still. But he was born on the cusp of the new modern world and slavery was being abolished, medical advancements were being made and the industrial revolution meant that Brits were living longer and uh, having a better quality of life. There is nothing in comparison to the comfort of the lives that we have today but um, yeah it was around that time that people started to have a lot more leisure and a lot more free time for things like football but he didn't jump straight into stadium architecture and design he was a factory builder before that he was an architect for factories and that is a big symbol and a big style of the football stadiums that he built the um, the functionality of the factories that he built were also mirrored in the stadiums that he built as well. So yeah, after years of being a factory builder and architect, he got into stadium design, which is where I found this article on BBC website by a historian and author, Simon Inglis, and he said, no other firm of architects before or since has clocked up such a client base in British sport. In more recent times, the Leach design stands have quickly disappeared as the new modern stadiums have been built but his influence can still be seen across England and Scotland. Mr. Inglis says that the first ground Leach worked on was Kilmarnock's in 1899. That same year, he was commissioned to design a new stadium for Rangers, the club he had supported. Rangers had been playing in a fairly basic 25,000 capacity timber ground and were keen to expand. They moved to the other side of Ibrox Park and Leach built a new oval stadium, which by 1902 had a capacity of 80. Thousand. Despite having a hand in Killies ground and the new expansion of Rangers or the new move of Rangers into uh, the site of the Ibrox that we know today, his stadium designing career almost ended before it even began. During the first ever full capacity event at the new Ibrox Stadium in 1902, Scotland faced England, arguably the biggest match in the world at the time. A section of timber terracing gave way and 25 fans lost their lives. Leach was uh, even there at the game and witnessed the tragedy in the stand he was commissioned to construct. More quotes here from Simon Inglis. So we, we begin. The Ibrox Terrace was built in a way which was common at the time, with wooden flooring on top of an iron frame. Today we would call them bleachers. They were very popular in American baseball stadiums. It transpired that yellow pine was used at Ibrox instead of the superior red pine and this was blamed for the disaster. Timber merchant Alexander McDougall was the man who carried the can, despite the presiding judge feeling that he was perhaps a scapegoat. There was evidence that Leach had approved the use of yellow pine in order to get the job done, but McDougall was equally to blame because apparently he billed ranges for the higher quality pine. So basically in what should have been an incredible day in Leach's career, it turned into tragedy quite quickly. Rangers initially approached another architect to rebuild Ibrox when the collapse happened, but shortly after they did actually reinstate Leach. The tragic stadium disaster of 1902 at Ibrox was obviously devastating and um, would obviously never 
never, with no one involved, no one in the world would ever want it repeating, but it gave Leach an important lesson in the safety of stadium design. He created a brand new form of strength and terracing in the Ibrox rebuild. And in the decades that followed, he became Britain's most prominent stadium architect. In some cases, he wasn't just drafted in to build the entire stadiums, but sometimes just singular stands. He was the first man to use maths and science when thinking of building stadiums. The, uh, he wasn't just tasked with building big wooden stands as used uh, during the 1800s for cricket and athletics. He calculated the exits needed, the amount of materials needed, how much would have to be ra how many raised tiers they'd need, and good straight lines for fans, fireproofing materials, and stuff like this. He introduced drainage, the amount of slopes needed on the stand so that everyone could see. It was the genius of his double decker stands and design that really resulted in high demand and the floodgates opened. Most of Leach's stands have sadly been demolished over time, but his finest pieces of work that are still standing to this day are the Johnny Haynes stand at Fulham's Craven Cottage and the Bill Struth main stand at Ibrox, the, the second of which is uh, somewhere I've become very, very familiar with over the past year or so. It's an incredible stand, and it is a listed building, as is Fulham's stand as well. Hopefully these listed statuses mean that these two won't be changed much over the years. Of course, uh, Ibrox and the Bill Struth main stand has had certain parts added and modernised, but that front facade is so unique, and I think it should just never be touched and should just be kept the same forever. His designs were meant to be seen by the public beautifully on the outside, but the genius of his design was from the inside. The safety and the structure was hidden within the inside of this amazing beautiful structure as seen from the public from the outside. There are still apparently some surviving stands at Everton and Dundee and Portsmouth, but yeah, over time they're just getting demolished and being built up uh, by newer stands and stuff like that, but yeah, I do hope that a lot of the originals that are still around today can remain. Yes, a lot of these stands and a lot of these stadiums are being ripped down and changed and demolished over time, but the mere fact that I've been to so many of these Archibald Leach stadiums fills me with immense pride. And it's probably something that a lot of fans who attend these stadiums don't know about. You might be a Liverpool fan, an Everton fan, an Air United fan, a Rangers fan, a Middlesbrough fan, a Leicester fan, an Arsenal fan, Fans of all these clubs whose stadiums, past or present, have been built in part by Archibald Leach. Without that man, you wouldn't have the stadium you have. You wouldn't have that feel of the club. You wouldn't have that fabric of the club. The stadium, the home of your team, is there because of the man that is Archibald Leach. And yes, while Arsenal have moved, and yes, while Leicester have moved, and while Sunderland have moved, he had a hand in some of their stadium design of when they were at their best, of when Sunderland were winning trophies in the 1800s, of Middlesbrough's long history, of Arsenal's Highbury Stadium. He was the man who put the spade in the ground and built these stadiums into what they were, and essentially helped these clubs grow and become the trophy winning legendary clubs that we know today. Yes, his stands are disappearing, but he was working in an era around the late 1800s, early 1900s, where he didn't have the technology and his stands are only being changed and renovated today as new technological advances are being made. So I wouldn't necessarily say that they're knocking his stuff down and someone else gets all the credit. The credit should firstly go to Archibald Leach. Anyone who comes along and changes the work that he's done is only doing so through, yeah, modern technology and, and, the, and, the, and the knowledge that we have these days around building and around architecture and stuff like that. And yes, as mentioned, I have been to a lot of the Archibald Leach stadiums and here is a montage of the stadiums of which Archibald Leach helped to build. Yes, a lot of them have changed over time, but without him, we wouldn't have these epic stadiums today. Archibald Leach, thank you so much for everything. You're an absolute legend of the game.